Now to those communities across Michigan cleaning up in the wake of several tornado touchdowns. The National Weather Service confirming at least four twisters hit southwest part of the state on Tuesday evening. Julie Dunmire with Scripps News Grand Rapids is live for us in Portage tonight with a look at how the city continues to pick up the pieces following the devastating storm. We see all that damage behind you, Julie. Yeah, Brian, it is just devastating here in Portage, which is near Kalamazoo, roughly the same size as Roseville in Metro Detroit. To give you some perspective, this was someone's bedroom and just a small glimpse of the damage that we've seen. We've learned 100 homes roughly have uh, been destroyed in this 100 families displaced. Portage police was going door to door knocking yesterday to make sure that people were OK and that they were safe. No one died. And that's the good news. That's the takeaway that everyone's been saying repeatedly the last few days. Portage Public Schools has been closed the last three days, but much of the main roads throughout Portage have been uh, completely blocked. It's been impossible to get around the city. The city has been a complete mess. As you can see, uh, extensive, extensive damage. These townhomes each used to house four different units, so many people uh, without a place to stay right now. Everyone who I've talked to is managing in the meantime, but very concerned about their li living situation for uh, the permanent, more permanent future. And understandably so, Julie, you mentioned those dozens of homes that were destroyed. Down trees and power lines are everywhere, as we can see as well. How long is the cleanup expected to take? You know, that is the first question I asked the mayor yesterday when I spoke to her, and there is no definitive timeline. I don't think that the rain today helped any when it came to cleaning up, but there is a, a no determination. Many of the main roads here in Portage are still blocked off. Brian. And Julie, you've been in the neighborhoods talking to people over the past couple of days. Some of them have uh, lost their homes, of course. What is the one story or maybe the one thing that has surprised you or stood out to you the most in all of this? You know, Brian, uh, people are good in especially in difficult situations like this one. Uh, I spoke to a woman earlier today who said that she didn't have a basement here in these townhomes. She banged on her neighbor's door and actually weathered the storm in her neighbor's basement in order to stay safe. Those stories are common here in Portage. Another woman who I spoke to said her husband actually run around and turned off the gas lines in this townhome community to make sure that there was no, no issues with that. So people just stepping up to help one another out. Yeah, it seems the worst always brings out the best in people. Julia Dunmir, with Scripps News Grand Rapids, Meyer rather, sorry, Julie, bring us the latest on the cleanup efforts in Portage following Tuesday's tornado touchdowns at EF2. Julie, thank you. And it's a good thing to see behind her that townhome, the first floor was all intact, right? And the second floor, even though it was damaged, the if you look through those bedrooms that sure. she was pointing out, the closet space back behind and the hallway in the middle was still intact. That's what we always tell you, interior portion of the house, lowest level possible, and that's a very, very good, 135 mile per hour winds went through wow. there, and people were certainly much safer lower in the middle of the house or building. Yeah.